Good morning, everyone. My name is Priya Esperanto, and welcome to our Friday morning devotional. Today, we have the awesome opportunity to listen to a lovely woman named Tina Chaidez from the San Diego Ministry. Tina will be talking about Proverbs, and specifically Proverbs 31. So please tune in to listen to her very original take on a very classic scripture. Please enjoy the video. Hi, my name is Tina Chaitis, and I have the privilege of sharing a devotional with you today. I am from the San Diego Church. I've been a Christian for 20 years, and I'm married to an incredible man named Martin. And we've been married for 15 years, and we have two beautiful sons, Ezra, who is nine years old, and Noah, who is seven. Today's devotional is out of the book of Proverbs, which we know is known for wisdom, insight, and knowledge. And I chose the book of Proverbs because I was looking for wisdom, insight, and knowledge. And as I was going through different passages, I had been meditating on Proverbs 31. You may be thinking, oh, here we go again, the Proverbs 31 woman. But I promise you, it's on a new take. You know, I chose the devotional on the Proverbs 31 woman because this is a woman that I have admired for many years. But to be honest, when I would read about the Proverbs 31 woman, I would just kind of feel discouraged and inadequate. I would think to myself, who truly has time to do all the things she did in one day? How was she able to be everything her husband needed, her children needed, the society needed, her employees needed, her servants needed? How could she do all those things? And sometimes I would miss some very important things about the passage that I want to share with you today. You know, I want to point out some things that I had not recognized before that have given me a lot of hope today. And one of the things I want you to walk away with from this devotional is to be confident in your future and to be able to laugh at the days to come. And I wanted to talk about that because, you know, right now we are going through a global pandemic. The whole world has shut down and there's a lot to be afraid of and a lot to not laugh at in the future you know for me as the pandemic hit i just felt a lot of fear and just a little bit of anxiety what is happening you know when my kids were told to stay home from school and stores closed and lots of people got sick and lots of people lost their lives all over the world and lots of people lost their jobs and i have never experienced anything like this and nor have you in our lifetime right and so there was a lot of fear of the future and i was kind of feeling really insecure and as a mom and a wife and a friend and a daughter and a sister and all of those things i i knew i cannot lose my confidence who can i learn from and it led me to the proverbs 31 woman but like I said, initially when I read about her, I was like, oh no, here we go. But as I read through, I began to learn things that I had not learned before. And I hope that through this devotional, you would feel confidence about your future, confidence about where you are in life right now, and that you can laugh at the days to come. Let's read in Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. And it says, a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and, lie, and she lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark and provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that her training is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed and she is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gates, 
where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linens. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs at the days to come. Again, she can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Listen to this. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her her reward. She is earned and let her works be praised at the city gate. Wow, what a woman. You know, this scripture is so interesting because usually when I've read it in the past, I just thought this woman was just a servant and that she just was full of domestic duties all day long. But the scripture starts out really interesting because it says that the first thing she did was that she served and loved her husband and brought him good all the days of her life, which shows that she was a good spiritual woman, right? And then it says that her kids didn't want for anything because she took care of them, which was also very encouraging. She was not overwhelmed and overtaken by her domestic responsibilities. She loved her husband and she loved her children. You know, what else do we know about her? She was an excellent wife, an excellent mother. She was a manufacturer, a manager, a merchant, a seamstress, an upholsteress. She was a realtor, a farmer. She had so many responsibilities and apparently she was really good at them. And you know, what I think is so cool about this scripture is that this woman's appearance is never mentioned. You know, when we read about her, it doesn't say that she was gorgeous and beautiful and that she had this immaculate wardrobe and that her hair was like beautifully flowing and that she had flawless skin and a banging body. No, it doesn't say that. It describes her, only her character. And her character is what made her beautiful, what made her successful, and what made her worthy of praise, according to the scripture, which I think is really, really cool. You know, verse 30 is the most telling in this scripture because it says that charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but that a woman who fears the Lord is worthy of praise. And this is the key of this passage. You know, besides all of the other things she did, the fact that she feared God is what made her worthy of praise and what made her successful. You know, to fear God meant that she loved God that she lived a spiritual life, that she was centered in him, that she was devoted to him, right? That she respected him, that she honored him, and that he had a reverence, she had a reverence for him. That's what it meant for her to fear God. So imagine, this woman can seem like these things are unattainable about her from first sight, but when you think about her having the strength of God and that she was a woman who feared the Lord, that is what made it all possible. So when you think about your life and yourself and you are fearing for the future, are you considering that God is a part of it? You know, even though I'm a Christian and I've been a Christian for a long time, I can sometimes forget to include God in the equation. I just think about how am I going to get through or persevere through certain situations? You know, like I mentioned right now, we're going through a global pandemic. And one of the challenges with that is just not knowing what's gonna happen in the future and feeling fearful of that fearful of the unknown and I have to remember God is with me and you got to remember God is with you we don't have to fear what we don't know if we center ourselves in God like the Proverbs 31 woman did but you know there are other fears that we're facing in the future as well or at least myself you know we're also going through some social injustices happening in our nation and really around the world that are particularly affecting African Americans and me being an African American and raising two African American boys you know, it has caused a lot of fear in me of the future. What if things don't change? What if things don't get better? What is the future gonna look like? And that doesn't bring laughter to me, that brings a lot of discouragement and fear. 
But I have to remember to center myself in God and know that God is with me. I can laugh at the days to come because I am going to the Creator for help and for love. And I'm centering myself in Him. And I hope you are too. You know, what about you? What are things that steal your joy and take laughter from you regarding the future? You know, it could be the social injustice, injustices that I've mentioned. It could be the pandemic. But you know, there are other things that prevent us from laughing at the days to come. You know, for you, it could be past hurts, relationships, addiction, abuse, the loss of a loved one. It could be a chronic illness, missed opportunities. You know, your children suffering or having strains in your marriage. You may be facing financial hardship, a loss of a job. You know, you may be struggling with mental health or just feeling not successful in your career. Or maybe it could be that different desires that you have are not coming true or coming to fruition. You know, whatever it is, I wanna encourage you that God is with you and that God loves you and that you don't have to fear. All we have to do is go to God for comfort and be centered in Him. You know, the Proverbs 31 woman, we can't assume that she was perfect and that she had it all together but i don't believe that's true because nobody is perfect right i would assume that her being a wife that she had challenges and challenges in her marriage i would assume that her being a parent that she had challenges in her parenting that she struggled as a single trying to figure out what was her life going to be like in the future what did she want to do maybe Maybe she didn't have her own voice. Maybe she had deferred hopes in her life. We don't know specifically, but we know that if she is the woman that fears the Lord, that something must have drove her to God, right? That you have to be lost before you can be found. So at some point, she must have had an empty way of life that only God could feel, which led her to him. And through him, she was transformed and able to have a confidence about herself and about her future and to be able to master the things that we read about in Proverbs 31. You know, when we are not feeling laughter for the future, it is totally normal and natural, but it should always draw and lead us to God. And so I want to read a few scriptures that have helped me when I am not feeling centered in God and when I am feeling discouraged or kind of insecure about the future. These scriptures remind me of God's goodness and they help me to remember that I can laugh at the days to come because God is with me. You know, the first scripture is Romans 10, 17. And it says, consequently, Faith comes from hearing the message and the message comes or the message is heard through the word of Christ. And I love this passage because just like the Proverbs 31 woman who feared the Lord, I believe that her fear of God led her to him to be devoted and to be centered in him. And I feel the same for me. You know, when I'm feeling insecure about the pandemic or about the social injustices in the world, when I'm feeling insecure about my marriage or my parenting or myself as an employee or a person or a member in the church, I remember that I just got to go to God's word and find my confidence in him. And that that is what's going to increase my faith and give me the courage to keep going. You know, also in Jeremiah 29, 11, you know, I love how God guides us through his word. It says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and for and not for disaster to give you future and to give you hope. And I love that, that God has each and every one of us in his hands. We don't have to fear the future because God knows what it is and God loves us and only good comes from him. And that we can laugh at the days to come because God is taking care of us. We only need to go to him. You know, in, Pro, in Psalm 16, 11, it says, You make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And I love that. Don't you love that? It says that God knows our path in this life. It says that his presence is full of joy. It says that at his right hand is pleasure forevermore. God is so good. 
And even though our lives may be a mirror of the Proverbs 31 woman's life, God is with us. God is with me and God is with you. You know, in John 16, 33, it says our lives, we know because of John 16, 33, that our lives can be full of trouble and losses and struggles, discouragement, disillusionment, because we live in a fallen world. But God is so good, like I said before, and God is so present. And we can get our confidence from him and in him if we hold on to him. So I hope that as we talked about the Proverbs 31 woman, that when you read this passage in the future, that you would not think of what you're not because of what she is, but that you will remember that she is all that she is because she is a woman who feared the Lord and who was centered in him. And that just as God gave her the strength and the confidence to look at the future with laughter and with confidence, he can give the same to you. I hope that this devotional was helpful for you. And please excuse all the walking people and the dogs. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I hope this has been educational and inspiring for you. If you'd like to know more, please join us by going to study.laicc.net and we'll be happy to contact you and help you in any way we can.